Hi, welcome to King Worldwide. My name is Lisa. This is my dad, Roy, and we're talking about Seek First the Kingdom of God and His Righteousness, Part 5. Number 5. Number 5. Well, Part 5. Number 5. <laughs> Same thing. Glory to God. Okay. As we've said, our golden scripture is I'm that as Tina. far as... Uh, good. Our golden scripture is that as far as uh, Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now, some people might be saying, well, why are we again, why are we again focusing on Matthew 6.33? Oh. Well, let me tell you why. Is that during Jesus' ministry, he constantly talked about the kingdom of God. Constantly consistently, all the time. As a matter of fact, after the resurrection, the 40 days before the ascension, it was his number one topic that he taught and talked about. Right. So I suspect is that if that's what he gave focus to, don't you think that that's what we ought to kind of focus on and give emphasis it's to? It's what the Father was telling him. Uh, well, and that's exactly what he's telling us to do is do the same thing. You know, the... Uh, Years ago, I got a personalized license tag for my car, and uh, I was prompted to just put the number 12, just put 12, and the word free, F-R-E-E. -E. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting mm -hmm. that uh, I didn't have a clue what I was doing back then as far as listening to the Holy Spirit, but he was still talking to me. Now, that's a point. That's he was still a point. He was still talking to me. And now I recognize as far as why that he had me do it. Number one, 12 is the number for government. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom of God, the number 12, represents government. And so the, the kingdom of God is a government, it's a system yes. where that it has jurisdiction over all of its citizens. So every one of us that's born again, that are believers, we're citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Yes. And so therefore, we are jurisdicted, we are controlled, we are guided by that government. And as a result, that's the reason why that we focus on Matthew 6, 30, 33. The word free is that how that came about, which I didn't know then, is that when one seeks God's kingdom first and they yield to Jesus and constantly yield to Jesus and to the promptings of the Holy Thank Spirit, Lord. guess what? They're free. They're yes. free. They're not in bondage. Yes. They're just floating around like a butterfly in the air. Is that? And as a result, they're able to really enjoy all the blessings that God has made available. Because yes. He said in two Peter one three, God has made all things for us for life and godliness. Yes. So everything that we ever need, want, or desire for life has already been provided. But we've we've got to learn how to hook up. Correct. How to hook up and stay connected. And let go of the past and, and contamination. Now, if you want to talk about as far as from a natural standpoint, you know, when we talk about the government and being being free, is that most people, most believers are in bondage, in my opinion. They're in bondage and they're not free. Well, why is that? Pretty simple. Because I was part of that equation Me for many, many years, is that most believers are seeking stuff. They're self-seeking. Saying it's for God. They're yeah, self-seeking, self-promotion, but seeking stuff as compared to God and His way of doing things. Now, if you want to understand it in a natural standpoint, is that most believers are following natural thoughts. Well, what's wrong with natural thoughts? Hmm. Well, if they're not prompted by the Holy Spirit, yes. then they're prompted by some other spirit. And since the God of this world is a demonic spirit, so therefore those natural thoughts are being prompted or being controlled Amen. by demonic spirits. And I was part of that Me for too. a long time. It was so and, much bondage. And, and even I catch myself even today. Me too. In, uh, so... If one is following natural thoughts, then that's contrary to seeking the kingdom first. And so what we want to do is that we want to translate, we want to Transform. move forward from natural thoughts 
to God's word and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Right. Because if one does that, they'll be moving in the direction as far as seeking the kingdom of God first. Now, if one's going to seek the kingdom of God first, I'm going to give you one prerequisite that I've experienced in my life thus far, and that is Romans 12, uh, 2, and, and that is be not conformed to this world, natural faults, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. I, I, gave, I gave some thought to this when, uh, on the outline last week, and I said, you know, if I had a mulligan in life, mulligan is a, a do-over. <laughs> a pass. Yeah, yeah a do-over, yeah. If I had a mulligan in life after I finished school, here's what I would do. If you took me back in, into that time. Late 20s? In, uh, early, early 20s, mid-20s, late late whatever. In, in, in that time frame, here's what I would do knowing what I know today. Hmm. Number one, I would go ahead, I would get a good job in the world economic system. It wouldn't be permanent, but I had to get, get a good you job. You would seek the Lord for what he wanted you to do. My assignment. And therefore, what I would do is that I'd have enough income to pay the bills and to go through life. Not properly. five jobs. No, I do one. Okay. And then number two is that I would have started a daily devotional program of seeking God and his way of doing things. And that equals God's way of success. That's why that our the training topic, program. Yeah, that's why our, our topic on Monday, on each Monday, is God's way of success because that's what we're all supposed to be in pursuit of, and that's what I I would do if I had a mulligan in life years ago. Not really in pursuit, just receiving, receiving yeah. and allowing. Yeah, we we receive, we don't go out and achieve it. Okay, here are some changes. I look back and I just jotted down four things, four changes so good. that I would have made uh, with this mulligan life, let me put it that way, and not in any order of priority of importance, but it, it just came to my mind. Number one. So to read between the lines, this is a great suggestion. Dad has been around a little bit with experience, and this is great. I'm taking notes in my head and after, so it's so good. Thank you. Uh, well, good. <laughs> Number one. With the Mulligan life, when I went to church, I would focus on advancing the kingdom of God versus my own program in life, what I call my kingdom. In other words, what I would hear in church from God's word and what is being preached, I would try to assimilate, digest and assimilate that. Well, what can I do in order to advance the kingdom of God for me and for other people and allow the Holy Spirit to confirm right and and the point the point being is that what I did is that I would hear the Word of God and therefore I would try to apply that as to how that I could advance my program in your job or your business or your calling no right? question no question that's what we all did yeah well that's that's not the highway we want the expressway, not the side. Satan road. likes it when everyone stays there. Oh, no question, McCall. Well, he, I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> uh, the second one. I would more quickly understand that God is not in control over everything. Satan wants us to believe this so that we will blame God or doubt him. We'll blame God for bad things. Yep. For example, like crime, poverty, sickness, is that... You'll hear some believers say that, uh, in, in directly or indirectly, they'll say that they blame God for that. But that's not true, mm -mm. and that's why that I would have learned more quickly the fact that God is not control over everything in the universe. He's in, he's in control of everything in heaven, but not here on earth, because Satan is the god of this world, and as a result of that, he influences as far as what we do. But we should be taking territory with with God in us as a believer in God's operating system. We should be taking territory everywhere we are to get it back. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But we have to be proactive in that. It, yeah, with that, the little Holy Spirit yeah, leading. We have to be proactive as far as getting into God's Word consistently. Yes. And then hearing and adhering to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Spirit does not send us out to the masses unless we're prepared and developed. Right. Anyone, most Christians, and I did the same thing, you get all full of the word and then just go running. 
and then you fall and stumble and frustrated and nothing worked and you think, oh, I missed it from God. Well, yeah, we heard the beginning blueprint, but we should have waited. Like, that's what we do now. And as I said, God, you know, Satan wants us to believe that God's in control of mm -hmm. the earth so that we will say it when we have a problem, like crime, sickness, whatever. We'll, we'll speak it, and if we speak it, that gives life to him to intercede more. even more than what he's done at that yep. particular time because what we say is what we get, you know. There's a, a familiar verse of mine, life and death is in the power of the tongue, positive and negative is in the power of the tongue, and what we say either activates demonic spirits yep. for bad or angelic spirits for good. Yep. So that's why the Lisa's always taught as far as be mindful of what we say because it's going to put in motion one of these two spheres of influence. Well, Jesus never said anything but what his father said, and that is just the, the blueprint we follow. I mean, don't say anything else, right? Right. Next item is that I would unhesitantly trust God's word, believe it, and live. Th these are things that I would I would change if I had a mulligan life. So you're doing this a, now, but you yeah. And we're just getting and, started. And, I, and I'm looking back to see well, what would what would I have changed? Good. I, you know, I would I would uh, I would un that's why I use the word unhesitantly uh, trust. Make it the final authority, regardless of what anyone else. Well, is doing. I wouldn't waver back and forth. That's I right. remember that I jotted down. Yes. Uh, I jotted down uh, several scriptures here that I'm familiar with, and because these are some that in the past I've heard umpteen times, mm -hmm. and I'd waver back and forth. In other words, I'd believe it, then something would come up in life, and then I'd question or have doubt. And then it wouldn't, you wouldn't stand on it because you had doubt. Well, the doubt and the question and the frustration blocks faith, so therefore, I was just sitting still in the water. And it's so it's just as simple as at that situation to choose faith. But that's what you do. But if you're not full of it, it's hard to it. do it. That's it. That's why that I said a prerequisite for Matthew six thirty three is Romans twelve two. Be not conformed to this world, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because you have to put it in mm -hmm. so that when stuff comes like that, it's got something to, if you will, attach to. And, uh, and when it does that, then you'll get on the right track. But here, here are a couple of them. Is that uh, Proverbs 3, 5, 6. I've known this one for mm -hmm. 30 years. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not on their own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He'll make thy path straight. Now. It's it, all. <laughs> yeah. Is that trust in God? Or is that doing our own own self deal. Making it happen. It's trust in God. Trust in God. All right. We're going to ask that for each of these. There's five of them I jotted out. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he. For it is he that giveth thee power, power to get, get wealth, wealth, that we may establish. That he establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers as it is that day. Is that trust in God or us making it happen? We need to trust God. On it's trust God. The next one, John 16, 23. These are so good, Dad. Whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in the name of Jesus, he will give it to you. Trust in God or making things happen? Trust in God. So Most people ask what they want without inquiring, and then they don't get it, and they blame God. And every prayer that we should make should go to the Father in, in the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. It's that combo right there is that this, that's the right way to do it. Correct. The next one. 1 John 4, 4. Greater, Greater is he that's in, in me than, than he that's in the world. world. Is that trusting God? Trusting God. Or us making things happen? None of us. Seems like we're on the right pattern here. Yes. Now, this next one is really cool. Mm, it's, one of my, what, it's one of my favorites. And, uh, <laughs> and before I say what it is, I've known this one, but I want to make sure that I was, I was right. And so... I took this Bible right here that I had at home, and I just opened it up. Mm -hmm. It went right to that page. Great. I didn't hunt for it. I just opened so it. So good. And I knew, I said, well, we're on the right track today, buddy boy. That's so, right. And that's Proverbs 10, 22 in the NIV version. Yes. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, wealth. without painful toil for it. Trust in God 
making things Trusting happen. Trusting God, the only way. What is, what is the blessing? The blessing is the crown, authority, and power over every living thing on earth and everything must yield yes. to the blessing. That's, the that's what it is. Okay. And the last one I jotted down here is that, and this is the one that I'm working on big time today, is that I would consciously, on a daily basis, develop a close, uninhibited relationship with the Holy Spirit. He's the only person on earth that knows God's plan for our life yep. and the correct answer and direction for everything that would come our way. He's the only one, everyone on earth. So it kind of makes sense if you had a neighbor, for example, and he, he's, he's the one that knew your future would you kind of hook up with it? Would yes. you kind of spend a lot of time? Well, you better it's the believe same it. Same thing. Well, the Holy Spirit is there, resides within us, so therefore, He's the only one. So that's why that I am, I, I'm diligently working every day in order to develop a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit. Tell us how you've done it. Well, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know we're going to talk right now. I was just saying, good job, good job, because I surrendered. And I got into the Word, and the Word changed me, and I started hearing the voice of God when I was reading. And it wasn't just about love is gentle. Oh, Lisa's gentle. It was about talk to the nurse in the next office when you go to that next office and give her some Starbucks cookies. Okay, love is patient, love is kind. And I would be doing my scriptures, and he would tell me things, and it went on and on. We became very good friends. How how consistent did you do this? Well, that, Not the cookies, but how consistent the tithe, did you do See, I was... I was at the end. I did a tithe of my time to the Lord for almost a year and a half, probably. That is two Which and a half is hours. Two and a half hours. But right. no one needs to do that. Like, I was, I had gone so long in mixed systems. My way, God's way, my way. I was just, I couldn't do it anymore at age 42. So, but right away when I gave up all my desires, gave it to God, said, use me, he said, you don't know my voice. And then we became friends. And now it, it's just a continuum. I'm always growing and developing and working. It's so much fun. I don't work. I just spend more time with God. That's it. Okay. The point I want to emphasize, it wasn't a one-shot deal. Mm -mm. It wasn't uh, five minutes a day, although you might have started it sometime. Or, yes. Our listeners might start at five minutes a day. That's fine. It was all the time. But, but Every but hour. But one has to be consistent every day. And at, what I found for me, as, one, as I have been more consistent every day, I want to spend a little bit more time being consistent every day. Where we get put our heart and our desires is yep. what we want more of. But at first, you might not want more of that. But it's the only answer. So if you don't feel it, your, your feelings will change. We don't live by our feelings. At first, for me, I forced, no one, I forced myself to do it. Yes, Why? because we're in the world. Yeah, it was different to how I was living my life. So, therefore, I had to force myself in order to get into the Word and to do it consistently. And then as I, as I forced myself in the natural, using willpower, which is of, but, of but you had the, the Holy covenant. Spirit helping you. Yeah, but I... I I exercised willpower, and then the Holy Spirit supplemented that with His power yes. to make it easier and easier. But the for anointing me. of God was on me, you know, in this ministry. And if no offense, but if you would have obeyed the verse by verse early on, that's what the importance of the anointing of this ministry. It is God has dropped it on us, and it's whoever we mentor. I don't just give words. I don't give words. It's what God is saying. I'm learning every time he's saying it. So what I'm saying is if you are wanting a relationship with God and you're stuck and we'll help you as long as, but you, you have to be willing to do what God is directing you because it's not my opinion. It's what the Lord says you need. And, and you'll, it's just like food. I think we all will digest that to different degrees at different times. It might be that we'll take a little bite of it and then a bigger bite some of the time and then the whole enchilada later on. And, uh, and if that takes longer, then so be it, it does. But the fact is, is that we're moving in the right direction. That, that's the point I wanna make. And in conclusion, let me just say this. As believers, we are, as I mentioned earlier, we're citizens of the kingdom of God. We're soldiers in the army of yes. God and boots on the ground in enemy territory. 
Now, here's our mission. Uh, she's stomping her feet like she's a, a soldier. All right, here's our mission. Our mission is to seek Jesus, pursue Jesus, and endeavor to live our life as Jesus did his. He's our brother. He tells, he can help us. He lived the way he's, we're doing. Yeah, when you really understand it, is that we try to live our life the way he lived his. And when we do that, then we are on, we're on the center of the expressway. And <clears throat> this, is, this is really explained in, in Philippians 3.14. I'm going to say it, and then I'm going to explain a few words, and then we're done. Thank you, Lord. Uh, it says, and, and Paul's talking to the Philippians, he says, I press towards the mark yes. for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, let me explain just a little bit of that, because for years I didn't understand, but <laughs> I do now. I press, that means maximum, sustained, consistent effort toward the mark. Mark is servanthood, servant of all. Yes. For the prize. The prize is the God kind of life. Just being locked in with him. Of the high calling of God in the anointed Jesus. Yes. That is the mission for all of us. You're on that trail. We're on that trail. So much fun. We're going down it. All right. Thank you. So good. Okay. okay. So good. Have okay. A great day. See y'all soon. Join us on Instagram Live.